I was born as a sweet little boy with cute green eyes. And don't take it from me, just take a look at the picture. Since I was an infant, people said that there was a gap, a dissonance, between my angel and protected like looks and my temper. My personality was strong, too strong, some said. When I became a teenager, like many, I had no clue what I wanted to do when I became a grown-up. Sorry, wrong. I knew I wanted to make a change in the world. I was born in a conservative family and for them, there weren't, at the time, in the 80s, many options for career choices. Either I would be a man of law, the family's tradition, an economist, engineer or a doctor. I told them I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I wanted to jump from project to project, always creating change in the world. The not so encouraging message from my family was, don't be crazy, just do what is more adequate and sensible. When I had to decide where I would go after I finished high school, I chose to study law. And of course, at Catholic Law School, the best and safest option. In part because of the peer pressure factor, my family, but also because I thought, let me do what they want and do it the best I can. I will have time to make my mind up and to be an adult who can decide by himself. I did my course without any major problems, but with great effort. After finishing my degree, I did a two-year internship at a lawyer's firm. And after that two years period finished, what did I do? I started making my own choices. I quit being a lawyer. My family was, of course, by my side, or maybe not. Actually, they thought I was crazy. I was expected to have a long-lasting career in law. Moreover, an area where I had big opportunities. My employees liked me and my family had a strong reputation in law in Portugal. In their words, it was absolutely nuts to let six years of university and two years of internship go just because I didn't feel it was right for me. But my arguments were, first, absolutely nuts would be to spend the rest of my life doing something I didn't feel good doing. Second, I wanted to be an entrepreneur who wanted to change the world, and this was not the way. At least for me, it wasn't. Lesson number one. Sometimes the best way to break the rules is to follow what is ex expected from you and go with the flow, but keeping your goals in mind and getting the most out of the ride. Law gave me many tools, learnings, friends and connections. But in the end, I had my own long-term plans. In this case, the biggest long-term journey ever, my life. I had to do what felt right for me. After this, people would probably expect me to become an entrepreneur, but it wasn't the time yet. I felt that I needed to learn more about how the world worked. In my mind, it was simple. In order to change the world, first you need to get to know the world a bit better. And what better place to know how the world works than finance? I decided to try my luck in BCP, now Millennium Bank, which was by that time the biggest bank in Portugal and where I got to understand how the market really works. Working in a big corporation also taught me a lot about organizational culture, processes and people. It was an enriching experience. The bank also thought I was doing a good job and because of that they financially supported a post-graduation in marketing and a two years executive program at INSEAD, YES and Edinburgh Business School. The truth? I think they were expecting me to stay in the bank and give them some return on the investment. What did I do in the end? Guess. Yes, you're right. I left the bank. I felt it was time to try my own luck and finally start designing my own destiny. I can tell you, they weren't happy at all. But lesson number two. Learning to say no to big opportunities in order to create the grounds for building a bigger one, even if you're not totally sure about the outcome, is the only way to get different and unexpected results. Then I finally began my life as an entrepreneur. Seven years of trying concepts, different businesses, with many failures and achievements. Design, real estate, fashion, sports events, and so on and so forth. But my first venture was with books. I love books. In my marketing post-graduation, I wrote a thesis about starting a publishing company that would bring a new perspective to the status quo at the time. I wanted to publish bestsellers that were focused on hot topics of society, especially if those were controversial. 
At the time, there was a very famous soccer club's president who was being charged with corruption and fraud at different levels. As destructive as the media can be, every day we heard appalling news with details about his actions. It was really bad for him. My partner and I, we felt that it was time to give him a voice. But there was a small, big detail. He was in jail. We consulted some friends and close people about our idea. And guess what they told us? You are completely bananas. Be careful with your reputation. Why do you need to do that? And what did we do? We went through with it. For us, fear was not an option. And the truth was that nobody in society was hearing his full version of the story. And that, in our view, was not fair. After many visits to the jail and private interviews with this person, we convinced him that it was a good idea to publish a book with the title The Trap, written from his cell. The launch had live TV transmissions and we sold around 900 books on the first day. After that, the book went to libraries all around Portugal and it was a success. Lesson number three, you need to risk and go beyond your own fears in order to accomplish great deeds. Doing what is right, adequate or expected doesn't necessarily bring good results, although it may do so. But in the end, if you don't try, you don't know. After seven years being an entrepreneur, I had tested almost everything. Business models, different sectors, working alone, working with friends and family. But always focused on my experience, on my outcomes, on my accomplishments. There was, there was something still missing. At the end of the day, I wasn't yet connected to that deep sense of mission I imagined a true change maker should feel. Maybe because I hadn't built something designed to add true value to other people's lives, only to my own life. I decided then to create an NGO, Terra dos Sonhos, in English, Land of Dreams, focused on explaining the importance of emotional health and fostering it in more fragile targets, namely children diagnosed with life-threatening diseases. These children and their families live very hard and tough situations where everything falls apart. In Portugal, if you dedicate yourself to work with social causes and organizations, it is almost certain that you have to deal with financial problems. Fundraising is hard and salaries are low. Moreover, the emotional involvement with your cause demands that you have a strong psychical structure that helps you to deal with people's problems every day, especially when we're talking about sick children. What did my friends tell me? Guess. Oh, that's sweet. But are you crazy? What about your life, your safety, your needs? Terra do Sonhos has been working on the emotional health of these families for 13 years now. Thousands of people were either impacted or inspired and touched by the work of this organization. The awareness about the work is great and people all around Portugal either know what we do or they heard about the organization. It was worth it. Lesson number four. If your dream is big, then do big. Don't let other people dream in your place or tell you what you should dream or not. Even the wildest dreams can become true if you're willing to dare and break some rules. And we're not necessarily talking about laws. There are hidden, non-written rules in society, namely on how you should behave in a proper way. I have dozens, maybe hundreds, of moving and transformational stories with Terra dos Sonhos and all the work I have done since I started this social impact journey, where I finally found my source of purpose and the space to become a real positive change maker in real people's lives. But I don't have the time to tell all of them. So I want to share a story that can inspire you to be bold and dare to break the rules in order to get inspiration and positive outcomes for everyone. Back in 2011, a couple of years after the great crisis of subprime emerged, and in the year where the Troika presented their program for the financial assistance to the Portuguese government, the mayor of Lisbon at that time, António Costa, who is now the Prime Minister of Portugal, decided that there would be no Christmas lights in Lisbon. The argument was that we needed to embrace austerity and save money in whatever superficial events we might have. Being in the charge of a non-profit organization that deals with emotional health, and knowing the importance of having positive and inspiring moments, mostly in hard times like this, my answer to this decision was, no way. Terra dos Sonhos started thinking of a way of defining this decision and bringing Christmas lights to Lisbon. 
we decided together with a major events organizer and some sponsors that we, will, we would build the biggest image made of candles in the world in order to give the Portuguese people the Christmas they deserved. On the 19th December, we asked people to come to the biggest and more emblematic plaza in Lisbon, Terreiro do Passo, in order to buy one euro candles and we had more than 300 volunteers that would take each candle and put them in the biggest Christmas star with candles ever made in the world. And guess what? The mayor of Lisbon, the one who said we couldn't have Christmas lights in Lisbon, was one of the supporters. In the end, the outcomes were truly remarkable. More than 300 volunteers involved in one day. Nine TV live emissions of one of the biggest national broadcasters, TVI. An European award for the most inspiring event of the year. A Guinness World Records book recognition for the biggest image ever made with candles. And more than 30,000 raised for the cause of Terra dos Sonhos. The motto of the event was fulfilling a dream, yes. And yes, we did it just by saying, sorry, but that rule is not good. Let's do different, let's do better, and we tried. As we tried, people started to understand that it was easy to change the norm. And we didn't need any revolution nor violence. We just needed to create inspiring alternatives. And that is the power of breaking rules without breaking everything around you. Lesson number five, be bold, be smart, and break rules with sense and sensitivity. The right balance of a rule breaker, you will have to find it within your own experience. But I would say that it is okay to be an outlier. It's not okay to become an outcast. Following your dreams may lead you to a sometimes strange path. But in the end, you must be able to say, I did what felt right for me. In my case, what feels right is to break the rules that are not right. Or to break rules that don't allow you to get further on your goals of changing the world. But never, never doing it in a way that generates unnecessary problems or disadvantages to people around you. There is a thin barrier to be drawn, and it is a sensitive matter. You should be responsible and aware at all times. But in the end, you will always need to push the limits and break some rules in order to get a new norm. One that really can make the world a better place to live in. If you want to be a real change maker, you need to be a rule breaker. And learn how to move from a world where the norm is the rule to another one where you understand that you can build a new norm in a systematic way, considering all the consequences for all the players. A world where you can really make a positive change starting by yourself, step by step. Like Mother Teresa said, we ourselves feel that what we are doing is just a drop in the ocean, but the ocean would be less because of that missing drop. Thank you.